This video is going to open your mind to the different ways of doing cargo lines in Transport Fever 2 throughout the ages. Now in the past, I've covered some of the best options, but only really for the late game. And that's why you need to watch this video to the end to find out all of the different methods that span across each section of the game as Transport Fever 2 progresses through time. And this is for a variety of reasons, such as the amount of money you have in the bank at the start of the game compared to the end, and also the aims and objectives throughout the ages, which change and vary rapidly. Not to mention as well, with different types of trains and vehicles that unlock throughout the ages. So we'll start from nothing, a brand new save on free game. Now while you're here on this menu screen, it is recommended that you get a few mods. You don't have to, and I say this every single time, I recommend these mods, you don't have to use them. So I recommend that you get sandbox mode, which allows you to slow the time progression down. And I recommend this because the default time progression is way too fast, and it means that you unlock trains just as you implement the last ones. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Also, I'd recommend vehicles no end year because sometimes the older vehicles are actually better for the job or better suited for the job than the new ones are. And I'll show this in a second. And if you've got deluxe content or early supporter content, shuck them on because you get more vehicle variety. Make sure you leave no costs off because that makes the game really easy. And once you've enabled these guys, go to the advanced settings. And now this is a really interesting panel. You can change lots of things like the actual textures the game reads from. So this means, for example, you could have a European style map but it's a desert. One of the most important things I will ever say, and I say this in every single video, vehicles, set to all, do it. It makes the game so much more dynamic because each set of vehicles actually has its benefits. Some of the vehicles are specific to vehicle sets and they don't have an alternative. Like for example, the Fairly is a mountain climbing train specific to the tropical map set. And you can't get that without turning on tropical mode. So to get that, you must be playing tropical or having all vehicles enabled. I will always say all vehicles enabled. That's just one example. There's loads of trains in this similar situation. Tick everything on, definitely. Unfortunately, I don't think console players currently have this, at least on the old gen consoles. I haven't had anyone confirm this. So if someone could do that in the comment section, just let me know what console you're on. Is it the old gen? Is it the new gen? And can you enable all vehicles? Because I've heard a few little rumours here and there from some of the console players that this doesn't always work. Now, because I do YouTube, I set the growth to 200% because it just makes sense when I'm recording a video. But I will actually recommend that you guys leave everything on these defaults. 1850. I'm going to stick it on very hard, which means that I have to try my absolute hardest and do the most efficient things to make a profit, which is going to prove to you guys, hopefully, why these methods I'm going to show you are so overpowered and why they're very suitable for the stages of the game. And then personally for me, I like to leave the town's cargo needs on two cargo types until we get to 1925, which I'll explain again a little bit later in the video, then up to four cargo types at 1925, and then when we get up to the 2000s, up to six cargo types. And this will all be explained as we go along. I'll also stick the industry closure frequency on never. It's just not my kind of gameplay, but you guys can stick it on. This basically means that if you don't use an industry, it's going to close down and spawn somewhere else on the map, which I don't like personally. Not, not for me. But you guys are welcome to put it on, of course. And then I press start. So this is a completely brand new game. Hey, so fun fact while we're waiting for the game, this guy has his pants on backwards. <laughs> So this is the map we've been presented with. The year is 1850, sandbox mode is on so we can change the date and speed. First of all, we're going to click this down to the bottom and then go one up to make it one quarter speed. This is the speed that I play on and this is literally the best speed in the game. In fact, sometimes it's even still a little bit too fast, but you want to make sure that you're implementing these features with enough time to spare and that's why you should probably put on one quarter speed. Uh, now the first thing of course, when you start a new game, these are the steps that everyone's going to take. They're going to go for the most seemingly logical option, which is to go, all right, there's some wood here and there's a sawmill here. Let's connect these two together. And then uh, where do we go from here? Um, sawmill. Well, is there anything it can go to around here? Uh, oh, yes, this tools factory. So we'll connect this sawmill over this place with a train and then the tools is going to go somewhere else. So this actually makes a lot of sense and it's very understandable why you would do this. I mean, these goods have got to get to the place. Like, how else do you think you could do it? There's actually an interesting way of going about this, which we're going to cover as we progress in the video. But for starters, it's very important to realize in the 1850s, the vehicle selection is not amazing. So to take a look at these vehicles here, which there's, like I say, not many of, we only have three available and all of them are very low power rating. Believe it or not, these vehicles are very different 
In fact, I actually did a test with these guys pulling different amounts of capacity loads and testing them for speed and I found out which train is best for every circumstance, which I'll explain to you. Looking into the road vehicles, we've only got horses available as well. And these guys, they only go 18 kilometers an hour, which is not very fast. I'm going to skip over a lot of the passenger stuff as well in this video because it's mostly a cargo video, but it's important to realize that all of your cities need to have passengers going in them to make you some money to actually fund the cargo in the first place, at least to start off with because it's going to cost a lot of money for setup costs. For your initial 1850s point to point, it will start to make some all right money in the starting run. We're going to deconstruct this later to make us more money, but it will have to be a lot of investment. So I won't cover passengers too much like I say, but it's important to mention because they all kind of tie in with each other and work together. So I'll briefly cover it. What you need to do is choose a capital city first of all, and it's going to be your biggest city where a lot of the goods are going to end up going. And an important rule for this is generally speaking, you want a large city in the center of the map. You could choose a tiny city. It doesn't matter that much, but centrally it does kind of matter quite a lot. You probably wouldn't want to be choosing this city in the corner of the map. That would be a bit of a nightmare to get all the resources to. I mean, the only logical conclusion I can draw here is Shanghai is the only place I could choose for a capital city. It's just pretty much center. Like, there's not much better than that, really. Most central Shanghai is now the capital. I've renamed this to capital just so it's very easy to understand. But make a note mentally on your city. You don't have to rename it. We're going to start out very basically like you'd expect by connecting point to point. And what point to point means is we're literally starting in one place, A, then we're going to B, and then we're going to C, over here. Then after that, wherever D is, go in there. What's reliable when you're first starting out is to use road vehicles instead of a train, because you're going to be blowing all your money if you use trains straight away. Not a good plan. We're going to take a look at this road network and see what needs connected. So what we could do is use a truck and run it down here and then go up here, then down here and then down this road and over to here and then back. But can we spot a better opportunity? I think if we run a truck down here to there, then we run a truck across here, meaning we need a road, it will be much better. Let's build a road to cross this area. When you're building roads or track, do it in small increments at the start of the game because we don't have the money to be spending on lots of straight terrain altering modifications like that. Later on, that's what we're going to be doing. But for now, this infrastructure is the best way of doing it. One truck station in each place. Now, some people have been saying the best way is to put your truck station as far away from the industry as possible and as close towards the other industry as possible. And then other people are saying, well, put it as far away as possible because then you get more money because of the way the AI works in this game. Well, yeah, okay, I can see why you would think that for a few people, but no, you don't want to be doing this. It's not sustainable. It just means you're going to be rebuilding things later on in the game. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Literally put it next to it. Keep it simple. Put it down next to it. Like this can sit here for the next 400 years in game and there will be no problems. And now to connect with a route, new line that's going to go from there to there, pick it up there. So we're going to go probably an alternate platform for both of those because we're picking up and we'll go from here, the refined wood, bring it down to the tools factory or at least the wooden tools factory. And that's good enough for now. This is a closed network. So this is not going to be delivered to the consumer, which is how you make the most money in the game but it will make us enough money to keep us going. And that's what's important. And pretty much straight away, despite our negatives from that investment, we can start to be making some money. Place down our own road depot. And this is gonna be a semi-serious road depot. It's gonna last us for the next 75 years up to the 1920s. With your road depots, you wanna be placing them near-ish the city, just outside the industrial area. Don't be placing them in residential areas. Not a good plan. Place them just outside the industrial. For example, over here. Now this guy, we can now buy our vehicles. Before that, we're gonna to need to name this line. Now we're gonna implement our first naming convention. It doesn't matter so much if you wanna use your own naming conventions to start off with, because it's not so essential in the early game, at least this early, but it's best you get into the habit of doing it correctly now at the start of the game and use it as time progresses in the game. And literally what we're gonna be calling this, for now at least, is wood to tools. Simple as that. There's no city names involved. There's no, this is a truck, this is a train. Wood to tools. Why do we do this? Well, there's no point in city names because eventually everything's going to be sharing cargo anyway. And there's no need putting truck or train because you can just press this button, which does exactly that. But there's no vehicles on there right now, so it, it won't work. But let's soon remedy that by going to the depot, buying vehicles, and we're going to get some horse-drawn carriages. 
Now go for the one that most suits you. They're properly all the same apart from these guys which are passenger. You want to get these three at the bottom for cargo. Pretty much just go for the prettiest one. I mean, there's barely any difference apart from weight. I think these guys are the prettiest. And I think a good safety number to go with, at least when you're starting, I would say for each industry you have, I would go for three per industry and then work your way up from there based on the demand. Now there's three industries here, so I'm going to go for nine. And that sounds like nothing, but it really isn't. Like, it's enough to get you started. And that's going to guarantee pretty much you making some money. Because even if stuff's stacking up and waiting on these platforms, stuff is getting transported and then you can make profit from that and build up to get you to a safe level to get more vehicles to be delivering what's left over, if that makes sense. Uh, now these vehicles have been put on the line already, stuff is being produced at this place. And if you want, you can go ahead and expand these storage places to give them like a cargo shed or some more storage on these platforms perhaps. And that just means that more things can actually be stored and held onto and things don't get despawned as often. It's actually crazy how different this setup is in the early game compared to later on in the late game. It's vastly different. So these guys are going a little bit slow, you might not know this. Press tab twice and that puts you in four times speed. Even better, if you go to your options, then you go over to advanced and turn on the debug mode. Make sure you press apply. Then you press alt GRD. That is the right alt on your keyboard. And then you go to debug speed. You can even bump it up to 32 times. It's massive. This refined wood just got picked up. It's now going to the tools factory with a $500 loss at the minute. It gets delivered. It's now made 6K. Now times that by nine and you're making some decent money. If you're playing on the super hard mode, what you don't want to do is you don't want to be having what's called dead heading. So this vehicle here is going to leave. Let's just put it back in four times speed. He's going to drop off his stuff and then he's going to leave empty. And now this horse and car isn't carrying anything all the way down this road until we get over to here. And this dead heading is very bad for business because things are running but not doing anything apart from moving to the next place. They could be carrying something. That's the end goal. Every direction will be carrying something. No matter where or what is going somewhere, it will be carrying something. That's what's going to happen when we finish this game. But because we've just started and we don't have the money to be doing that, like at least very effectively, you either have to search for very specific circumstances to do this or just take the hit. But let's quickly cover specific circumstance. So typically what you want for specific circumstances if you want to be doing the best money making at the very start, this is not necessary unless you're doing hard by the way. If you're not playing this difficult, you skip to this time code on screen. So what you're looking for is it a tier 2 industry, it's not a raw industry, and then somewhere else the exact same but the opposites. For a perfect sell, we would probably want to have a say steel mill that has a farm next to it. So we could pick up this iron, drop it off at the steel mill elsewhere, then bring back in the grain from the farm, and then this gets dropped here and then while it's here it picks up the iron and brings it back to the steel mill. And this is because that means that whatever's going is going to be full all the time throughout the journey, making the most money. And after plenty of exploring, what do you know? I found one! So we've got stone and we've got this oil refinery and then over here we've got something that requires stone and something that gives out crude oil. Okay, let's do this. It's going to be a ship, which is going to be very expensive. I'm pausing the game when I'm doing boats by the way, very useful, I do recommend that. As it's the 1850 we only have small boats unlocked so let's do it on the cheap. Find a nice good spot for the boat dock, stick it in. Ships are not my favourite way of doing cargo, but there's no doubt that ships do make a lot of money. Let's see if we can find a spot that covers both. So just there is the catchment range for it. It's not looking like I'm going to be able to get one that covers both sides, unless over here, but like I don't quite think that's going to work. So it looks like we're going to have to run some kind of slight loss here with some road vehicles and I mean very slight because it's like that far but a necessary evil. We'll do the same thing on the other side and I've got a feeling there's similar things about to happen here but it's only a small loss and the ship's going to make way more back anyway so not a huge issue. What you can actually do if you know for certain you're going to be using road vehicles is to stick an actual road depot in and then put on street access another exit for it. And that way, if you have two way, you can just run roads straight through the middle of them. Very handy. A new line that's going to go from there to there. And for now, I'm going to just call this oil two, just because it's the second leg of its oil, if that makes sense. It's going to go from the place 
come here, go hit there. This naming convention is really good to have in mind, but it's not the best four point to point, which is the starting way of doing things. It will work and it will make sense later on, so I still recommend using it. Grab a ship dock, stick it in. Probably the worst placement ever, but <laughs> it's fine. And you want one that can carry all cargo. Notice this one only carries this cargo, not oil. This one only carries oil. This one carries all. Get this one. Maybe even two if you're feeling lucky, but just go with one to start with. Connect these up on this end. Similar story, only one side connected. We'll grab ourselves a nice road depot. In this instance, we could just simply use an unload point, which makes sense if you want to save money. It's the difference between like 70k. So I will in this instance. Typically speaking though, at least later on in the game when we're already making money, I would always go for these guys. They're just handy, but unload's fine for now. And we'll get our new line that goes from there to that. All of these, of course, need naming. This becomes oil one. I guess I actually made a mistake there, and this is oil three because the ship would be oil two, wouldn't it? So you are oil two, and also you're gonna be bricks two as well, as you're gonna bring the stone over to the brick factory. Another way of doing this, which I already showed off, would be saying cruise to oil and stone to brick two, but this is kind of a shorter way of doing it just because there's two different properties in here. Press enter to save that. The first thing most importantly is to stick our road vehicles going because it's very easy to forget about the road vehicles. I would say, depending on how many industries you've got on the line, I would say three for each industry. There's kind of just three here, so that's fine. And it's a short distance, bear that in mind. And the same thing goes over here. We've already bought our boat and sent it off. Press play and off it goes. This is already getting stuff straight from here. No transport needed. And these guys are off to pick up the other stuff and they will run at a slight loss, but not a lot. What might be wise as well is to let the ship go for its first route on a loss instead of making it wait around. And that way at least it's moving. And there you go, loads of crude over there, 44 loads. And then it's also dropped its stone off, of course, which went straight into the bricks factory or construction materials factory. As there is a hell of a lot of stuff here, let's get another ship. We can tell this is making plenty of money, so why not? So let these guys cook for a minute or two. And that's basically how you do specific examples anyway in the early game. And since we're kind of talking about shipping, in the uh, debug menu, go to environment and just add a little cheeky zero before this five and look at that. Absolutely beautiful water. And just like that, in literally like a few minutes, it's already 1853. Three years have gone by in that time. Now imagine if I was on full speed and not a quarter speed. There'd just be no time to do anything. Especially because we're coming up to some major unlocks in the train hierarchy. If we unlock those first, then what's the point of the trains they give us at the start? Like, it just doesn't make sense. But now, as you can see, we've started to turn a profit. We're above break even, and we can actually invest into some bigger things. So this might be, for example, simple delivery. You might want to be taking, I guess, these tools to a delivery spot. Is there a city around here? Let's have a look. Bangkok wants them. Uh, Koshi wants them. I think Bangkok is the best option, considering it's kind of the closest. Same thing again, we can't just deliver one way, we can't pick them up and drop them off and come back empty, we can't deadhead. We need to have something coming back the other way as well. So let's have a look what's near Bangkok and what's over here. As well, because this is quite far away, it's kind of not a horse job. So we're going to be needing a train for this one, our first train. And another thing that's important to bear in mind with trains, they don't work the same as boats or horse vehicles typically do. Because they can typically carry everything, trains can't, they have to be specific. So under cargo here, you can see box cars only carry this cargo. These only carry this cargo and these only carry this cargo as well as tank cars only carrying fuel. So it's very important to bear this in mind. You want something that carries in the same group. In our case, it's tools. I believe that's box cars. So taking a peek, looks like we can carry any of these things, food, goods, tools. It's not ideal. It means that we're going to have a split mixed train, which is a good thing. It means we're going to pay slightly more on the maintenance for the train because half the train's going to be empty either way. But because the train's going there anyway, the main cost is the train itself. So with that in mind, what can we carry? So we could cheese it a little bit and take the iron from here to this steelworks, despite there being one next to it. A little bit cheesy. I wouldn't be doing that typically. It's up to you guys what you do. I won't do that because I think I like to keep things grouped locally. Um, I'm a... A very big fan of, of local industries sticking together. So instead, I'm going to take from this little farm here, a little truck, just bring them over here. Yeah, it won't make as much money. I prefer it personally. 
And now is the time to construct trains. Before that, we need to consider a few things. Number one, trains power. The two major things are the level of the track and the power of the trains. You can press this button up here and go down to the contours line layer tab. And that shows you just about where the land is and kind of where the mountains start and where the terrain is that you should follow. So it's not too bad in our circumstance. It only goes up a little bit of elevation here and there. Second thing to think about is the power of the trains. There's three trains available at the start of the game. You've got the six wheel D13 and the class V. So from my research, the best train, the fastest train is the class V with a low load. Key thing, low load, okay? Not powerful, fast. Because this is a, the best train in the game, at the beginning of the game at least, for passenger services. The six wheels is the most powerful and fastest at least under a heavy load, okay? Heavy load. So this train is the one you need to use for a heavy load. This one, this one is not too powerful, but it's the best at hill climbing. So if you want to accelerate up a hill, this one. Let's get the six wheels because it's pretty flat and we want a heavy load. We'll need cargo as well. We're carrying tools and food. So I believe in vanilla, it's the gondola that carries grain for some reason. So to start off in the early game, a reasonable number for a train is about five or six cars. Um, some people say until it says medium down here for power, but you'll very quickly start to notice that goes down in like two So that's not a good plan. That only works later on I would say about three to five cars is sort of the range you want to be in So I'm actually gonna go slightly above that and go for six cars just to keep it nice and balanced So I'm gonna go one two three gondolas so we get our grain and One two three box cars so we get our sort of balanced amount even though it's a little bit longer than Typically you'd want at this stage of the game so then connect the two up with stations. Key thing, don't use passenger stations. Make sure you're using the correct one. It's a cargo station next to it. So I recommend that you use these through stations because what that means, you can actually build on either side later on if you want to and expand further out. Whereas your terminal station, you can't really build any further out unless you go like here and there. And that's a bit awkward. So get yourself a through station. It's always good to have the option. Then before placing any track down, get the same thing over at your destination point. Now this one's a bit tricky because of the placement of the city. Might cost a bit of money to place this down, at least in the correct place. But in the early game, it's so worth it to get the stations down in the correct place. And let me show you when placing down in the city where the correct place is. Go up here and select the land use layer. Your stations need to be just between the commercial and the residential with a slight leaning onto the commercial side, but still covering a little bit of residential. The reasoning for this is because A, it means that later on if you upgrade the service to include passenger, which you definitely should do, the option is there. It means B, that the station is very center on in your commercial district where a lot of goods are going to be going. This is different from the industrial district because the industrial district is very flat and expansive, whereas commercial is very tall and compact. You can already see this in effect with these buildings growing compared to these guys, which are kind of just factories, very nice and flat. The ideal spot is about here. I would not recommend taking out a load of loans in your playthrough, but I'm just doing it for the video. You can get yourself in a mess really easily. Another thing not to worry about too much is the roads. They tend to sort them out, at least early game. Don't worry about them. What I will do is I'll either leave all the AI to build them until 1925. Sometimes I just go through the player ownership tool. I just lock everything off and that means the AI is not going to do anything crazy. That's something I kind of recommend you to do. It's up to you guys. We're going to be doing this exact same thing in 1925 anyway. And if you let the AI run rampant in between then, it just means more work later on. But it's up to you. This is key and very important later on in the game. Now's the time to connect the tracks. Once again, make sure you're not doing huge movements like this because you start to get bridges and tunnels or even just dips into the ground like this, which costs a lot of money. Instead, make sure to do it in tiny little movements. That's literally as far as you need to go, just like that. And do this all the way to your destination. Even with these tiny movements, you can still see the same effect happening. It saves you a lot of money. Try and keep this track relatively straight following the contour lines. I've done a pretty bad job, but it's just an example. <laughs> I promise you I'm not that bad. <laughs> when you get pretty close to the approach of the next station, I would actually recommend you stop and then just flip the camera 180 and start going from the other station because the approach is kind of like a crucial spot. Just connect a bit further out in the wildlands would be better. Track now connected. Nice. Train, new line from there over to Bangkok. 
I'm keeping the game paused as well because we've yet to do our little truck here, which I'll very quickly do now. That's complete. These guys are now off to pick up and our train should now be leaving this depot. He sure is. And already we can start to see these tools getting loaded on board. It's not a full train, but it's just because we've only literally just started making the uh, tools come out of the factory to be delivered to the end final product. And this means that now, even though we're losing quite a bit of money, at least for now, these tools getting delivered to the consumer are going to make the most amount of profit instead of getting someone else to deliver them and just delivering the resources to make them in the first place. And that's pretty much point to point. This is what everyone's going to do. It's kind of the most intuitive thing in the early game. So what's left on your part to do is to connect as many places as you like before 1925 together in this fashion. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 1925. Things have advanced and this is the capital in its current state. We've also connected plenty of different locations, as previously mentioned, together to form our network. But now we're going to do something that's going to flip it all on its head to make us a lot more money. So let's just take this out of hyper speed real quick. We'll put it back into the normal speed playthrough. And now we can start to take a look at what's changed. Now, because we are in 1925, of course, we have the new vehicles unlocked, which do make a massive difference. Let's take a look at how we're going to improve our cargo network to be a bit more OP. We're going to start to do what we're going to finish and fully flesh out in the 2000s, which is going to be called hubbing. Now, because it's the capital city, we're going to place our main hub nearby, but not close to the capital city. But first of all, what is a hub? Well, a hub basically is a place like a vacuum cleaner that sucks all of the things in the surrounding area into it and then outbounds them wherever they need to go. It's really cost effective because it allows trains to have multiple different types of cargo, such as fuel, coal, wood and bricks on board. It can have a variety of things and it can be full both ways because of this system. To start off with, it's going to cost a bit of money to set up and it will only probably be full one way, but in the future it will be full both ways and that's really OP. We've got plenty of money to work with and also plenty of money coming in. We are going to lose that money coming in temporarily like I say, but let's get started. First things first is to place our hub, go to buildings and grab yourself a nice cargo station. Wouldn't recommend the Terminus cargo station, it's just not very practical. I would go for your standard and then I would make it the longest possible and I would then set it to about four tracks is usually the right amount, at least for this stage of the game. Find a nice spot of land by going to the contour lines layer and we can then see where the little hills are. There's not really many round here, so we should be fine. I'd like to keep it away from a lot of other things, like I wouldn't want to place it here because it can get in the way a little bit. So I'm probably going to place it down around this sort of area. Here seems fine to me. And now that's in, for now, this should be perfectly fine. But bear in mind in the future, we are going to extend this to uh, basically the maximum the game will allow us to do. So you can either leave it as it is now and build from here, or you can go ahead and wait a little bit of money for the next 100 years but at least it'll be ready for the 2000s. It's up to you. I'm just going to show you what that looks like, but I'm going to keep it as is. So this is a sort of length of a platform we'll be working with in the 2000s. It's very much necessary if you want to have the most efficient traffic flow. You can actually keep this shorter length of platform and it still will work perfectly fine in the late game. But if you want to have those really long trains, then it's good to have a long platform. Like I say, for now, we're going to get rid of this and we're going to just keep the standard because this is kind of just a late game thing. Now we need to connect all of these tracks into kind of a main line. And there's two ways of doing this. You can either build straight off here, but that kind of conflicts if a train's stopping. Not great if this is the main line. So instead, what I like to do is I go into configure here and I'll add some track just randomly on the outside of the station. Then go to the track tool and I'll build down to the end of the platform like that and make sure it's flat. Then I will go alongside this and I'll do the same all the way down here. And then I'll go on this side again to the end and on this side again to the end. Then I'll delete the old piece of track. I connected up with regular track and now you have a perfectly parallel and perfectly flat bit of track that isn't part of the station. So there you go, nice. And this is going to act as our fast speed main line. If there's any trains that aren't stopping in this station, then they can just bypass straight through with no stopping, no slowing down. And that's what you want. Connecting a station to a main line, there's two ways of doing it again. You can go like this and connect each one into it like that. Or what I like to do is I'll bring the track out a little bit like this. And then with each track, I'll bring it in, starting with the outside most track. So you wouldn't start here. If you start on this one and plug it in like this, then it means that this track instead can plug in like that, which to me looks better. It's much easier to build and also easier on the trains because the curvature is not as strong. Then this track would connect into the main line, but don't connect it just like on both sides. There's a better way of doing it. If you connect into this side, 
then you leave a little small gap just like that and then connect it to the other side and that means that trains not only can pull onto the correct side of the track whichever that might be on your save it means that they can also choose the other side of the track if needs be which is very useful and not only that, these trains are going to use this track, but it also means the train coming down this track, for example, might also be able to use this line. It just adds more options for your trains. Very useful stuff. And of course, like everything, planning is essential because it takes a lot of space. So you've got to bear that in mind when you're building. The next thing actually is to connect it to the road network. So we'll go to our road tool. We'll grab a truck station, make it the biggest possible and the longest possible. When you're expanding your cargo stations, make sure that these connections here, these little tendrils, still connect up to the platform stations. Because if they don't, like this, it's not going to connect. You see how I just got rid of that connection there? And now these two stations aren't connected. If I get rid of that one there, the tendril comes back and both are now connected to one another. So here's an interesting example of cargo. So we've got our logs here and we've got our refined wood here. Now, what do you think we should do? Do you think we should have these logs go to refine lumber and then refine lumber to the distribution hub? Or do you think we should have logs to distribution hub to lumber? Well, actually, it's the second option. Now, it might make a little bit of a confusion there as you think, well, hang on, why would we need to deliver logs to here? Because they're needed over here. It makes sense. And 99% of trucks that are going here with these logs aren't going to drop anything off but it means the network has it plugged in. And the end objective of this is to have everything plugged into the network so the trains will automatically take exactly the correct amount. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing with everything else that I've already got pre-existing on this map, at least in the local area for now. I wouldn't dream of doing stuff all the way over here, for example, in Hyderabad. So with a lot of your industries, you're gonna to wanna to just make the route and maybe add one vehicle to it, at least for now, just because we really aren't going to be making much money off this. You might want to make the smallest loss amount possible by just running one little vehicle to the distribution hub until we get everything fully functional and you can really ramp up those numbers. So into perspective here, I'm going to get a new line that's going to go from this oil pickup and it's going to go drop off here and straight backs. Alternate platform for all of these. So that kind of covers it for road vehicles. Now, I'm sure you're asking, how do you do it for trains? Because that's kind of the key thing here. We can do it long distance as well. Let's take a look at this train here, which is carrying loads of random stuff. I think it's wheat and tools, which is going both ways. We set up in the 1850s from Bangkok over to this little station here near our capital, which is really not that ideal. So we're gonna change it up a little bit. And the same can be said actually for this plastic over here. Both these lines will do together. So let's get rid of this station as this train instead is gonna pull into our distribution station. So we don't need another one right next to it. And then the same can be said over for this station. We'll get rid of this one just here. And then instead, both of these tracks are now going to go towards the distribution hub. It should be said as well that these tracks are single track and we should be on double track for distribution hubs. So for that reason, I'm going to start at the distribution hub and work my way out. I'm very quickly going to turn away from this city here and I'm actually going to back it up as much as I can just because of the fact we're so close to this city. There we are. That's looking a bit better. We want to keep these trains away from the city because of the emissions as much as possible. So in this save, my trains are going to drive on the right side just because that's, sorry guys, almost standard in the world. It just kind of is apart from England. Um, so I guess I should be on the left, but for the sake of everyone else, because I know I'll confuse people if I don't do it this way, we'll do it on the right side. We'll leave the left for another time. If you want to do the left, you're perfectly welcome to. Just remember everything is opposite. Okay, now this track is going to split into two. We're going to have our main track coming off like this. This is now going to connect into here like this. Uh, this track here is going to connect into there like that. What we could do is we could double track both of these and have multiple trains, which we'll get to, but it's not essential right now. We just need these trains to plug in. The only thing we do need to do is to connect the other side of the track into here. There's going to be a bit of a crunch here at this junction because there's two switches right next to each other. It's going to be, get quite busy, but because we only have one train on both lines, it won't be a problem at least now. We'll fix this when it comes to it. Two signals because each track needs to be defended from the other train so they don't have a crash. Same thing can be said here because we're driving on the right. We need some signal there. And then this one should be just fine, I think. We don't need a signal. Talking of signals, let's get some down over on this side. We need a signal to protect going into the junction because on this instance, it is a little bit more chaotic. And because there's going to be stuff parked here, it is very essential we defend the stuff parked there. Uh, whereas this side, there's nothing parked here, or there shouldn't be. So we want these trains to be using this track as much as possible. Whereas this stuff we need to defend. So we'll get a signal down just there. We'll also get a signal down on both ends of the platform, just like this. 
and this is not 100% necessary as the game does have built-in signals for stations. But firstly, I think it looks good. Secondly, if there's any glitches within the game, like any problems with the pathing, path then you always have this to fall back on. Another reason why you want signals like this is because it allows trains that are leaving the platform to have priority over incoming trains. And that means that you're never going to have a case where there's too many trains trying to get into the platform at the same time, because if a train leaving has priority, it's always freeing a gap for the next train in the queue as opposed to trains pushing their way in and causing jams. And then for exiting as well, you want to have signals there like that. And also you probably want to have a signal just here like this as well. And this is not saying that you have to do it on both way traffic on bi-directional. You can just do a one way system, which works. And I'll show you how that would work, but I like to have it. So at least you can change your mind later. So it's set up for both ways anyway, even if you don't use it. So if we were going to put a loop in on this station, which would allow you to do some more custom things like turning around, like if you were coming in on one way and then going all the way back around and out, if you wanted to keep the train at the front, for example, without flipping, or if you didn't want your trains to come in, stop, and then go out the other way, for whatever reason, then you would have this setup which I'm about to show you. It's all defended with signals, so it will work. The trains will pull in and then pull back out. Either way that is, but I'll show you what to do if you don't want it that way. We're driving on the right side, so it would come off and go around like this. Because there's a switch here that goes across onto the other side of the track anyway, we might as well go from here and build our loop like this. It's recommended to go as tight as possible, keeping it flat, and then we'll just pop our signal back in there. That means the train's gonna pull across the other side of the track and into here. Instead of two different switches that go across the track at two different points, we just have the one, makes more sense. Same thing can be said on this side, because we're driving on the right, so we're crossing over the track like that, and then we're gonna have a loop starting here. Make sure you keep it nice and flat, all of this. I'm going to go ahead and connect it straight up, but I guess you guys do it a bit more neater like that. Making sure you replace your signals, very important. You also then want to put a track in connecting to this side of the track over here like that. And that means the trains aren't going to be permanently stuck in the loop going round and round. They can actually come off the loop. However comedic, it's a necessity. <laughs> put it in just like that. While we're on the topic of signals, it's worth adding some signals to your main through line as well. So on this, just before the entrance, just so it's nice and neat with these signals, I'll put a signal just there. And the same can be said on the other side of the platform, just there. I'm also going to go right in the middle and I'm going to put two signals in it just like that and that. And that gives reasonable block sections between the trains. If you're confused on this at all, I've got a video covering signals, but come back and finish this video once you finish that one. Because what I'm about to show you is going to blow up your economy a big time. So now our two stations have gone, we've got the errors, we're going to connect our trains up. Click on the train, click on the route, manage line. Our old station here, number one, can go, and its place is going to be the new station. Same can be said on this route just here. Pick it up, get rid of the old platform that's not there anymore, and connect it to the distribution hub. Anything going to the distribution hub is going to be on all alternate platforms, every one available. And this will make it easier in the early game just to work stuff out. So these two trains are now going to pull in to the platform. This one's a goods train, so it wants plastic. And the other train is a wheat delivery train, which is also wanting to take tools back the other way. And that means that we need to plug these resources back in as we've just disconnected them. As it happens, the wheat that was getting delivered here is its own thing. So we can get rid of this guy and then we'll click on the trucks that were going to this place. So we're going to select on our trucks here, making sure that it's the correct line we want, which is food in this case for wheat. Select it, manage line, and we're going to get rid of the station capital east because now it doesn't exist. Make it on the distribution hub just there, fully alternate platforms. And now that means that the wheat that's getting delivered to distribution is going to get picked up from here instead. That's now plugged back into the network. We're going to then replace our delivery. We're going to make it a nice and small one as before, and that's going to go back into this tools factory because the wood that was getting delivered here before now is going to the distribution hub. And that means that it needs to come here instead, but make sure it's via the distribution hub so trains can pick it up if they need it. So we're gonna find one of these trucks again, which is wood to tools one, manage line. And then after the last stop, which in our case is gonna be this one here, number four, then add a station. Number five is gonna be our new station just there, alternate of course. And that means that the wood here is getting delivered to this tools place here. And it will also mean that the tools should be getting picked up and brought back to the distribution hub. But can you see an issue with this? If there's tools on board at number five, it's going back to number one. It's trying to pick up at number one. We can't be having that. So that means once again, back to the distribution hub and fully alternate platforms. And then it will go back to the wood after fully unloaded and it will start the whole process again. And that means that now a lot of resources, including tools, refined wood, raw wood, all that jazz from before is connected 
into the distribution hub and that covers everything on the trains that were already set up before this it should all be connected now so if we go ahead and press play i'm going to put it in dev mode so we can see it in hyperspeed we should be able to start seeing a few resources popping up on these platforms because I only added a couple of vehicles to each of these routes, there's going to be a bit of a build up. You can see here there's plenty of stuff waiting around. I'm first of all going to put a cargo station in here just so we can house extra stuff. That makes sense. And also on the stuff that's overloading on this line, go to the vehicle manager and we'll add loads more of these onto here. Let's go for about 10. That should start to solve the issue somewhat. Already the wheat's just had its first delivery. Stuff's getting picked up and distributed. Let's just slow it down a little bit here. This train should, yep, there you go, a bit of plastic just been loaded onto its destination. And there should be some more of that coming in now. I've just bought those new vehicles, like this one here, that's going to get full. There you go. That's now going to distribution. And there you go. These things are now getting loaded onto the platform so the trains can deliver them. How good's that? What I'm going to do, just paying attention here, is because everything is on one platform, but there's two different routes, two different trains taking it. I'm going to go to this one, for example, Manage Line. We're going to find Capital Station, the distribution, which I'm actually going to rename. It's probably a good idea. And then this one is going to become a different platform. Let's say Platform 2, for example. And then make sure that this is updated in the alternate platforms. And then now that means that two different platforms have two different stuff and we shouldn't get anything overflowing. Just in case, it might be wise to go into the modification of the station and then build some more cargo buildings, like for example, this one here, and just go with a few more just to get some more storage. And there we go. We now have lots more storage in this warehouse. This is going excellent. Let's just hop aboard a train. Now, last time I covered this, a few of you got a little bit confused. So I'm just going to very quickly go all the way through the system of one of the lines and walk your way through everything where things are going. So let's find some wheat. So this is where we start. There's a farm here producing wheat. This is then getting picked up by this vehicle here. And we're going to take this wheat all the way to the next city down the line which is going to be this one here, where it's going to get dropped off at the drop-off point, like that. It's now unloaded onto this platform here at Bangkok. Now we wait for the train to come. Here's the train, it gets loaded onto the train, and all of this wheat is now getting taken to the distribution hub in the capital. We're just pulling into capital here, and we have a full load pretty much of wheat. That wheat's now getting unloaded, and it's going onto these platforms here, where a food truck is going to come and pick it up. And what do you know? A food truck has just arrived. That's going to pull in, and it's going to pick up the grain. Now it's going to drive to its next destination, which is going to be the food processing plant. This then gets dropped off in the food processing plant, which is then getting turned into food. This food is now getting picked up by another truck, and that truck is going to take it to its next destination. The next destination in our case is going to be the capital, because the capital wants food. So it comes down here, and then it swings by and drops off the food just there in the capital. So these guys who are wanting food, get their food. And quickly going back to the train station as well, this wheat, while it gets unloaded, it also at this train station loads these tools back on to go back the other way. And that's why this is so OP, because it allows trains to have any type of cargo as long as it's going one direction and you can have full trains. This is just the start of it. And that means what's left to do for you guys is to connect all of the stuff around here into this distribution hub and then have trains that are going to go outbound to their destinations for example, we're going to be taking plastics, let's say, that's sitting on this platform over to this production factory way over here by Hyderabad, which is a goods factory. You can really only do this by train or maybe boat at a push. Train is definitely best. And then those goods could, for example, be delivered here. This is why it's OP. The whole map is now connected once you do this. And it means trains that go so fast because they're not stopping, they're going directly with exactly what's needed. Once you've done that, it's a case of balancing. So if there's a lot of wheat sitting around here. I might add a few more trucks to that line in specific, but don't go crazy. Add it by five each time. It's probably a good number. So between 1925 and the 2000s, make sure that all of your industries in the local area to the capital are connected to this distribution hub. And now let's jump to the 2000s. And this is where the fun begins, like I say. Let's very quickly have a look at the map in its whole entirety. We're going to start in each corner and we're going to find the middle point, which is probably about here. So yeah, about in line with our capital, just almost. Same can be said for the other side of the map. Let's find this side and let's go to about the center. And we're going to go to about here. Yeah, it's pretty much spot on with the capital. That's just about right. Because it's a square map with four new introductory stations. If it's a long map, you want two. We're going to go up here, which for all intensive purposes, we're going to call the north. Because it's mostly ocean, we want to put it more towards the land. So even if this is kind of where we want it to be, obviously we can't put it there. So instead put it around here and we'll go through a smaller station 
not quite as big, uh, just around here somewhere. And once again, you can always upgrade the size later. Okay, go back to the center now, and we're gonna go on this side. And on this side, we're gonna do the exact same thing. And you guessed it, we're gonna go back to the center, we're gonna go this way this time, and we're gonna find a spot for the next station. This one's a bit trickier, because there's a big lake, and there's not a lot of resources around here, so I'm very tempted to go over this side, which will make a lot more sense. Place it down. This would also allow trains that are using the cargo tracks to also be doubled up as passenger tracks. It's not a passenger train video, but I thought I'd mention that. I have placed passengers into this save. There is a passenger train doing the rounds somewhere, but it's obviously nothing. Like, you would absolutely not be wanting to use this sort of setup. Single track, crappy train. No, absolutely not. You would want something a little bit like this, which is just so much better. <laughs> Again, on this side of the map, bit tricky because it's a lot of ocean so we're gonna have to just reel it in slightly i think and find somewhere else i think probably here is going to be the best spot which is a very awkward spot to be honest with you but it's gonna have to do i think because there's literally nowhere else it's all ocean you get that with the uh, tropical maps it can be a bit annoying sometimes but that's the challenge and that's why it's fun what I might be tempted to do is to combine, because this station is very off-centered to the right, because this station is very off-centered to the left, they're very close together and I might be tempted to delete both of these and actually just place it in the middle between the two, about there. And this is going to mean that we're going to get more traffic in this station, because obviously we've got double the amount of cargo going to one station as opposed to two. So what instead will place the station down with the extra tracks, and it'll make it a significantly bigger need to be It's going to handle all this cargo. Now let me show you how this works. So this is just an example obviously, but Hyderabad wants goods. Now what are we doing over in the capital? Well, we're making goods. At this factory here, we're delivering plastic and steel, and we're producing goods. And goods fit into trains with boxcars, which there's one of these running already delivering plastic, and it's going back empty. As you can see just now, it's going back with nothing on board. Okay, so this is a very simple thing. Because it carries the correct type of cargo anyway, we don't have to do anything here, it will be automatic. Over at the distribution hub, we're going to add a new train. And this new train is going to just simply pick up and deliver. Because we've already set up everything else. And this is why it's OP, you can do this for every type of cargo. We can reuse some of these tracks actually. I'm going to pause the game, and I'm going to double up these tracks here, which we're going to reuse. Okay, and now this is double track. Now, I wouldn't typically advise this. I would do what I'd do down here, which is have crossover and then crossover again. Because it, this track is very high frequency, a lot of trains are just exiting and getting on their way. I'm actually going to go ahead and not do that on this specific track. I'm instead just going to plug this in just like that on that side. And then on this track, I'm going to simply plug this in exactly the same spot on the other side. Like I say, I wouldn't advise doing this typically, but it just makes sense for this specific example, just because this is very high frequency. This track here, we just doubled up and put back to where it was going. We can split off once again and go towards Hyperdad, which is somewhere in this direction. There you go. Now for this bit of track splitting off like this, do you think it would be wise to have a track that crossed over first and then a track that came off that and went like that, or a track that went straight over like that? The answer is probably going to be going like that and then across like this. Because at least for now, we're not going to have huge frequency on this train as it's just doing a delivery trip. This may change in the future and if your plans align with this, then use the other type. And make sure once again that you backtrack and add signals everywhere. Now we're going to connect this track all the way to where we need to go in Hyderabad. So we're not connecting directly to Hyderabad, we're connecting to here, okay? And that's all connected up now. This track now goes off here to Hyderabad, just here. This is now going to be connected to the road network. So we'll grab one of these little guys, connect him in. And that's already connected up to the main city over here. Now here's something that's quite important. Over in our land use layer tab, the third one down in this menu, we can see what type of buildings need what. And just below that is the cargo layer, which is allows us to see what type of buildings require what. Obviously residential, not what and anything but the shops and the industrial do want stuff. So with that in mind, let's get ourselves some buildings and then our truck unload stops. And instead of just placing one like that, we're gonna place a few around the place just so we've got options. You want the trucks to be delivering to each of these stops so the coverage is 100% across the city and not concentrated in one area. A new line from our north yard to dropping off in the city over here. We'll go for that one there to start. Then we'll go back to the north yard, as the line normally would anyway. Make sure these are both alternate as well. And then we're going to go to a different stop. This one's very important, remember, as we're going to be expanding the city evenly and not concentrated in one area. And we'll stick some vehicles on that route as well. We need a train then that's going to go from the distribution here all the way to the north yard. 
and that's going to be called dist to north yard and we'll grab a train for that as well we are taking goods so we'll grab a nice goods carrier that one will do one two three four five six seven is probably a good number we'll stick that onto dist to north yard stick around because i'm going to show you a completely fully fleshed out version of this model which you can see in just a sec and our plastic train that was dropping off and picking nothing up before now has goods on board look at that they are now going to distribution and here comes our train that's going to the north yard which is going to pull in and it's picking up our goods they are now going to get delivered to where they need to go which is the north yard dropped off and our trucks now travel to the north yard they come in and they pick up the goods full load and they're going in and they're going to drop off in the city there you go but hushy you ask how is this any more beneficial than just having one hub in the center of the map what's the point well, what you need to do on your save is you need to connect all of these hubs to your capital first of all. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch saves and show you a fully fleshed out version of this model and how OP it is. Especially including why these extra yards or hubs do work. So here's a map that I made earlier which follows these exact same principles and it's making plenty and plenty of money. So let's take a look at the industry in this game. Let's first of all go to our north yard as this is a long map as opposed to a square map. I've only got a north and a south yard instead of a north, south, east and west yard just because they're not really very needed to be honest with you. So here we are, it's quite short. So the length of this station is only 320 meters which isn't very long. The maximum you can actually build in game is 680 meters which is what I would recommend if I was to rebuild this whole system that I would do it on 680 meters because I'm so late game on the year 5000 here it just makes sense to have a really long station. For the 2000s, I mean this is a sort of okay amount of length, it's good enough. But if you want those really long trains, get the maximum 680 meters length of a train. So this is the collector yard in the north. So we've got lots of resources, just like in our other test map we just made. All getting sent over to this pickup. And then we get a big train here, which is going to be taking the stuff over to the main city, to the distribution yard. And that's then distributed amongst the people, starting at a capital C and working its way outwards. So let's have aboard one of these trains and let's find out what's happening here. So let's start here at the very beginning of the production line with our coal. This lovely little village that I built is a stone and a coal producer. It's got a little mine going on here. So let's hop aboard this train, which has just been filled up with these resources, which is now going to go to the sorting yard in the north. This guy drops his load off in the north sorting yard like this. Okay, so just to quickly cover what's going on here, here's an inbound train that's come from the distribution yard, and it's now going to the sorting yard in the north. So this guy is just about to leave, and he's going to pull in to one of these platforms. So here we go, and now this guy is arriving, he's going to get loaded on board. More than likely I'm guessing some wood, some stone, a few things like that. Because anything that basically needs to go down south, whether that be distribution, whether that be the south yard, it all gets loaded on, whatever's needed. So it looks like we've got some wood, we've got some stone, and that's about it for now. But it can have loads of different things on here. And here arrives our train into the distribution hub near the capital city. Remember, it's just outside the capital, you don't want to put it inside, you want to put it outside in the industrial area. Okay, so this train now drops everything off that needs to stop in the capital and it retains anything that needs to go to the south. And with that spare capacity with things that are now empty, it can go down to the south with the stuff that needs to go to the south. Which by the looks of things at the minute is coal. Some kind of steel mill maybe wants it at this current moment to fit the demand? Not sure, but it's all automatic and all the coal is now loaded. And so our train has arrived, it's dropped off the coal and I'm guessing it's going to be picked up by something else. And on its way back it looks like it's taking crude and stone and bread, stuff like that, back to the distribution hub. And the cycle repeats and that's why it's so OP, it's all automatic. But wait a second, the most important thing while you're doing all this is how you manage your trains to make sure there's not huge traffic jams and to also make sure that they're running at the maximum speed they can be to get the products delivered as fast as possible and also not delay any passenger trains. And that's why you need to watch this video which talks you through every train in Transport Fever 2's benefits and train hierarchy. 